brave people. Super excited to share Lona with you today. Her brave story, her brave role model. Now we've known each other for a really long time. Oh my and God. And I know, right? So our babies are like mine is turning 10. I know. Mine 13. It's been too long. Ugh. Yeah, it's been. <laughs> like yeah and they uh, yeah anyways very grateful for the babies now are you already shorter than one of yours if i'm what shorter you, mm -hmm. uh no we're getting in eye contact now she is it's probably a matter of a few months then she's she's yeah then she's looking <sighs> down on me but i normally put high heels on like 24 <laughs> 7 <laughs> just to outnumber her <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my almost 10 year old, he's at my shoulder. He's properly at my shoulder now. And, you know, when they're like, this isn't fair. One of the things I say is, you know, my job is to raise a well adjusted or adjusted, polite <laughs> member of society that who's an adult, right? Like that's my that's my job to help create a world that's good enough for you, but also make sure that you are good enough for the world. And the other day he looks at me and he goes, and then you tell me to stop growing. <laughs> I was like, well, I know where you got that tongue from. It's from yeah, me. <laughs> I know. Well, that's a sentence I say a lot as well, especially to my son, right? It's, it's a cute age and yeah. they still find us like the most beautiful, perfect woman mm -hmm. in the world. So I yes. guess we're counting the weeks until that will change. But <sighs> anyway, <laughs> it'll never change because I'll always believe it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So you have had such an incredible life. I know a good bit about you and your studies, where you started, your career moves, some pretty darn dynamic career moves, some that were gifted to you and some you chose, your amazing husband in your international world. I'm so excited to discover which of your brave stories you're choosing to share. <laughs> I was thinking about this. So without further ado, yeah, let us know. I will. Well, thank you. I was, well, Nicole, you came and visited me last week. Yes. And um, as always, you leave this energy in the room, which uh, kind of had the, the waves still going on in the room after you <laughs> left. <laughs> um, I was really appreciated that you took the time mm. to stop by. I know we have been keeping contact for such a long time, um, yeah. even as, as you went abroad and I still sticked around in Heidelberg. <laughs> um, and then obviously I started thinking about um, kind of my bravery story. Um, and it's, it's difficult to put a, a, I guess, a finger on which one means the most, uh, but something triggered out of our, I, th I think um, our conversation, um, we, well, we've both been in, in great companies. Um, yeah. One of the companies we were in the same one. Um, but I guess my my story is is I guess about being brave enough to to face facts. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. By many, many years in these great companies, obviously you get a lot of opportunities. You build all these skills and a great career, um, and and very seldom. I guess, because you have so much going on on the same thing and the same time, mm -hmm. you seldom have the time to just stop and think about, wait, am I, am I still doing what it is that I want to do? And it does this feel right? Because you're just in this, I don't know, is it treadmill of English yeah. on English? Yeah. yeah. So you just, yeah. right. Hamster you're just trying wheel. hamster wheel. You're just trying mm -hmm. to survive almost through throughout weeks and months. Um, but I had constantly this feeling of, I guess, being exhausted or like numb, right? Nothing. You didn't get excited about anything. Even in the private life, you didn't yeah. get excited about the small things. Um, so I remember I came, came in my last job. I had this amazing program, super team. We de delivered great results. And I came out feeling this numb feeling, not really being excited about it, but 
I guess, right, I need to move on to next program. And I went into my boss and he's like, no, there is no programs. Just sit put for in the next month. <sighs> Some kind of reorganization was going on. And I was just, and I just had this crash almost in this void of nothing, right? Asking myself, is, is this what you want to do? So I guess that triggered and I left uh, to build my own company um, after almost 23 years in corporates and 15 years in my last job. I just right, turned my back to it and say, it's, it's time to do what I think I always knew I, I'm good at, mm -hmm. um, but doing something on my own and really trying to build with my own hands something I feel is purposeful and something I feel passionate about. And I know I told you about this. There was this convention where I was invited in to talk. And <laughs> just before I went on stage, I had this, oh, my God, it's the first time in 23 years that I'm here just as me and not hiding between some company logo where yeah. it doesn't matter how much bullshit you tell, you can always, well, I'm just an employee under that company. Mm -hmm. And I was standing on the stage and for the first time in my life ever, I felt I was, I saw my name on there and I saw my company name just below my name. And I, I almost shit my pants. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't blame anyone else than what, what I'm saying now. So say the right thing, say the right things, right? You are you now. Mm -hmm. And Oh my God, what a, what a feeling. So yes. yeah, taking, I think that bravery step to mm -hmm. sometimes reflect, are you doing the right things, but also be brave enough to break mm -hmm. out and say it, it yeah. now it's anything or nothing, yeah. but I can't just stay in this numb, exhausting, empty void. Right. right. Totally. totally. And I think you probably talked to a trillion people feel the same. <laughs> Um, yeah. 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 It's interesting, right? Because I loved how you started. Um, and it, it instantly took me back. Um, we were in one of the cafeterias at the company and I was going on and on about some sort of transformational thing and I didn't know what to do and blah, 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 blah. and um and there were like four or maybe even six of us sitting there all women from all over the world uh, now living in Germany and you kind of like I just remember that your your curled hair came <laughs> forward and you were like Nicole look at the facts look at the facts Nicole <laughs> And I was like, oh, oh, okay. And then I went back and I looked at the facts and I was like, I don't want to look at the facts. This is under budgeted, under resourced. It's been tried time and time again, but the same people refuse to make their leadership behavior change. And, but that stayed with me. And then years later that like, look at the facts, just look at the facts, just put them onto paper and then take your action. Right. Years later, I learned about something called the model, and it's just a thought. It just helps you organize your thoughts and to look at the facts. Mm -hmm. And the first part of it is circumstance. Mm -hmm. And I now use this a lot for my own life, for my kids, my clients, whatever, right? And you're hyper specific in the circumstance, which is the first line. Mm -hmm. And what's so interesting is when people look at the facts, sometimes they realize. I'm exhausted, but not because of the facts because, and this was my reality, I got paid way more than double six figures. I had amazing benefits, huge reputation, amazing friends at the company. I got to travel all over the world. I had full flexibility. Like the facts were amazing. But then you go into the motto with your thoughts and your feelings and I was so unhappy. Mm -hmm. It was it, it wasn't because of the situation it was because of how I felt and that was enough for me to move right Exactly And I think that that's what's so powerful with your story is like look at the facts and then you said but I also felt exhausted cuz let's be real I mean how many times right now I'm in a place where if someone was like hey girl 6 weeks everything will be fine and then the project I'd be like okay <laughs> Right. But you're in this huge, luxurious situation and it's that's not the right thing. It's time to move. But it's a process, right? I mean, if I think back on the decision to leave and build is probably mm -hmm. a process which had taken place over many years unconsciously. Mm -hmm. I didn't know 
yes. that I had already been like leaving for many years. Yeah. Um, because that I think the facts, yes, as you say, many are fortunate enough to be in very great comfort zones. Yes. And, 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 and I got this question a trillion times as I left because I opened my company and five weeks later, the Corona lockdown came. Right. And I oh, was and let's, like, let's be really specific. <laughs> so let's be really specific. So Lona has built, which I, I really want to, I want to come back to like how you chose this business model. Because for me, I was like, yeah, totally. That's her magic. But anyways, she built a in-person co-working space in the center of Heidelberg, Germany. And then five weeks later, for an in-person co-working <laughs> space in Germany, which was super strict, right? Everything got shut down. Everything. Yeah, it's been the most e expensive office I've <laughs> ever, ever had for myself. <laughs> I was sitting here all alone in my 400 square meter, uh, <laughs> great, beautiful, equipped co-working space with yeah. everything you need. Um, but well, I mean, you have to enjoy that. <laughs> and I learned yeah. very much in that time, a lot about resilience, but I also lear mm -hmm. learned a lot about what I call the circle of power, right? I could blame the politics, the virus, the world, some yeah. guy somewhere who ate some animal and that was the reason why the virus <laughs> came. I could have yeah. blamed the whole world but I can't influence that. And again, back to the facts, right? I try to concentrate on what is within reach. What can I do to, mm. to, to stay right sane <laughs> and, yeah. and just touch those things which you actually have an influence in and forget everything else, right? Because it just makes you miserable. It just makes you neg yeah. negative. It just puts you down. Yeah. But the things you have in reach, which you can do and, and influence, that builds you up because you have the right, I, so I'm doing something. And I yeah. guess that was what I kind of, what saved myself was I, I, I went on my bike every day. I rode with my bike to my co-working space. I put on the lights, I put on the coffee machine. Mm -hmm. I sat here until the evening and then I closed everything down and went home. And I did that every day and that was my sanity check until and then right even though we weren't supposed to meet the first day guests come came right the first co-workers came the first company um closed their the membership and then uh -huh. right humanity yep. and what we need yep. the contact with others won over mm -hmm. even even a lockdown and i guess yeah. that that what i yeah. took out of as, as a learning of that as well yeah and when I asked you when we were in person together, first of all, you have – I've been to so many co-working spaces, and you know me. Like, I, I say my feedback. <laughs> yes. You <laughs> created the co-working space that is focused on the experience of the individual, and it's a specific type of individual, someone who sees their success – by lifting up other people. And you can tell in where the coffee is located and how the toilets are set up. You can tell in how the rooms are designed. There is a concept of we are lifting each other together mm -hmm. and we are all going to succeed because we're all, and this was the part of our conversation. I'm going to tear up again. I can feel it. When you shared with me, yeah, five weeks in, everything got shut down. My shock question was, oh, my God, what'd you do? And your answer was, I turned on the lights every day. Yes. Yes. Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. And how many of us – for me, there's just so much bravery in this entire arc, which I think is why – you mentioned you were having a hard time putting your thumb like on the most important one. Mm. But I think that's why because having this incredible comfort, lucrative career, which gave so many opportunities, choosing to have a different experience, choosing to follow, quite frankly, your magic girl. I saw your house before you renovated and after you renovated. I saw it. I knew. <laughs> Right. And then facing this crazy situation and saying, nah, I'm going to turn on the lights. Exactly. And the trillion ways or, or yeah. times where you were asked, well, if, if you had known, would you have stayed in where you were? 
and I don't even had to consider a, a millisecond. No, I wouldn't have stayed. It didn't change. It wouldn't have changed anything. I might have, yeah. right? Have have um, right, decorated it differently in order to right be able to create more safe places for those one mm -hmm. person who really wanted to to kind of build a plexiglass uh, kind of surrounding right. around. Then I didn't know that. Um, but no, I wouldn't have stayed and I would still have done what I did. Um, and I think that that just that that just con like told me it was right. Always trust what it is when you get the time to reflect, always trust what it is that your yeah. your mind and your body and your stomach feeling is telling you because it's, it's always right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it inspires other people. Yeah. Yeah. It inspires other people. I mean, since so you posted on LinkedIn and I shared it and I have gotten private messages where people were truly inspired. Because it's it's been it's been a process, no? <laughs> it's been a process and a learning curve which right, I wouldn't have been, right? That's a gift. If you can say something mm -hmm. came came something good came out of the the pandemic i guess for me personally that learning curve where you get to see sides of yourself which you would probably never have experienced yeah. in a comfort zone job because yeah. you never get to the limits you never get to the edges um right. but in situation like that you you get to the edge and then it's a decision am i still a good polite person even if i'm stressful and i don't know how to pay my bills can I still be a nice person towards other people? And I think that's a choice we all have. Absolutely. Oh, oh my gosh. I a million percent agree. A million percent agree. And in this process of, so I'm coming into my two years. So I'm one year and 11 months oh my today. God. Is it still two crazy? years almost? <laughs> it's almost two years. And there have been times where I was like, okay, this client is pulling me into a series of behaviors. I said, so, you know, I, I've shared on my podcast before and I think we knew each other. No, I think it was after we met each other, but I worked for a gentleman who was hyper aggressive. I copied him and I got a double digit pay increase and a promotion. So I thought that's how people were successful. Mm -hmm. Well, he then leaves the company and I am completely exposed because aggressiveness is not how you're successful. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, the company sent me to coaching instead of just firing me because I'm pretty sure my behavior deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just heard somebody that was in that situation with me just like burst into laughter because, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, and and so when there were times when I was working with a client in my own business where I noticed this person is pulling towards aggression, I now I need to be brave and have this conversation. And I've actually fired clients because mm -hmm. they were not ready to experience an assertive consultant who was kind and collaborative mm -hmm. and global and does has zero, zero hesitation in facing racism. Like zero, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In the United yes. States, this is a huge issue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with looking, well, inside the United States, but also outside the United States mm -hmm. and calling, you know, people rest of world. No, baby. Uh-uh. They're Belgium. Mm -hmm. Humans. Mm -hmm. They have expertise mm -hmm. or, you know, um, South African or whatever, right? I have no issue talking about that. So I have fired people. And then I've been like, I have bills to pay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but I mean, even a co-working space, as you see it, right, we are open to everyone. And I think my belief is if you do co-working well, it's a it's a safe place where you can be diverse, where you can be your yes. authentic you. Yeah. And we have like people on all levels, all mm -hmm. industries, all kind of backgrounds, all kind of looks and colors and right, whatever you yeah. need. Um, but be able to to find that polite like mm -hmm. room where everybody has a sense of I'm safe here and I don't need right. to like right. put a mask on and and say something because I think he or she would like that that yeah. that is maybe the the takeaway I took for many years in in especially I think in corporates probably also in in middle sizes but you do to take a mask on yes <clears throat> and you are 
pretending to sometimes pretending to be something which you think the other person is is kind of expecting from you yeah and that i just right yeah. that that doesn't have a room in a in a space like mine here you can't you can't play a mask it's just not yeah. right it's nobody not is work. why would you right we yeah. don't give, give a shit right yeah. <laughs> what you need to play for us we really are interested yeah. in who you are as a person because then the connection the real mm -hmm. true connection happens yeah and and for me Safe spaces are where we're holding up mm -hmm. the patriarchy. We're holding yes. up the white supremacy. We're holding up this concept of what is right. Whereas brave spaces, like what mm -hmm. you've created, are where we are holding space for all people mm -hmm. and not permitting hurtful behaviors, harmful yes. behaviors to create a safe space for bad behavior. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, exactly. And that and you can feel in your space it's designed for people who are lifting each other up mm -hmm. through shared their own success which becomes shared success. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Just yeah. So yeah. thank you for being brave and stepping into that. Well, thank you. And thank you for stopping mm. by last week. Oh. Yes. I'm hoping Need that I get, get there again in August. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So speaking of lifting up other people, who is the brave role model <laughs> that you want to share with us? Oh, my God. Um yeah, I have um, many brave persons in my life, but mm. I think the bravest is my mom. Oh, <laughs> I know your mom and she is such a wonderful energy and yeah. she insists on, on people having more cake. So I'm a fan. Like, yeah, so that's fan. true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> full fan. <laughs> yeah. I think, right. My, mm. my mom and dad were, I guess, what you can call entrepreneurs as well. They had a, they had a shoe shop. Um, and I, I grew up in a family where, like vacation was very rare. And when we went on vacation, uh, mm -hmm. we were talking about the shop all the time. <laughs> and I have to like often think back to, oh my God, am I doing the same to my kids? <laughs> am I just repeating? Um, but my mom was this stable, or right as kids was this stable size, always kind of mm -hmm. right, making sure the platform which we were growing on kind of had what we needed to do. Yeah. And my my dad was this very right extrovert, loved a lot of people, talked. You you were never you always knew when he was in the room. Mm -hmm. Um and I guess she was she was right getting maybe a little bit in the shadow of him because she's she's not a extrovert person more an introvert. So she was kind of stepping okay. the bat. So in 1979 my my dad died um, of lung cancer, and what uh, I experienced I with my uh. with my mom was that from 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 that time she had to almost learn to to stand on her own kind of right two feet, and not in the shadow of somebody who would just do it for her. Yeah. Um, and we sold while after he died, we sold the shop. Um, she sold her our childhood house she moved away and she literally started all over new friends new home new city new thing to do oh whole new gosh. life and i don't i can't remember what it's called in english but these there is this these toys where you 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 hit it and then it come up again this oh these... yeah jack in a box <laughs> yes. yeah 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 you hit it and they just flip yeah. up again and <laughs> And that's my mom. <laughs> you flip it her down and she just, she well, I'm up here again. Um, and I think. Oh, do so you much... mean those wobble things? Yeah. They're like the they're little. Round. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're what round they and you called? flip it. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. But they're so fun for toddlers. <laughs> Stand up persons. I don't know. Stand yeah. up things. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there is so much. Um, I'm really trying not to call to cry <laughs> because yeah. You know, I... But um, my my mom is is uh, when you would look up in my world, then the word brave that would that would be my mom. That would be a picture of her yeah. because she constantly kind of shows there is you can you can even even when kind of what she's always said his death was like cutting off. Her right arm, right? She was literally handicapped after that. She felt handicapped. 
But since then, she's just been building her own life as she's living it today. And she's right doing, I don't know, yoga and gymnastic and have people in her life I've never met and (laughs) right travels down to visit us and she's still like going strong and I right I would I would hope that I would be like Mm. this when I get older (laughs) if something like that or god forbid it would happen yeah yeah Yeah. oh my gosh as you're as you're telling that story like my heart is just really um very very warm and it also reminds me you guys had purchased and completely renovated a home in a little village and one does that and then stays in Germany that's the culture Mm. and it wasn't working for your family anymore and you guys made a bold move and it was bold it was like well from the outside it was like boom boom and moving forward yeah and now I get that Mm. you had an incredible role model yeah who built a life that served her and her children yes. and therefore the world. And then, I mean, she worked full time. Don't forget that. <laughs> right. We always forget that often, but I know where I, I've worked always full time, even as my kids came, because that's yeah. for me a, a very normal and reflecting back on that. All right. She's been an amazing role model. We never yeah. missed anything. Right. We knew that even if she was working her butt off, which she probably did all the time, mm. we never missed out on anything. Right. We were always mm. driven somewhere. We always had what we needed and we were always loved. And I think that is right in that discussion. And Nicole, you know that even in, in Germany is often a discussion between career or family. And I've yeah. never understood that as a Dane. Right. I've never yeah. understood that. Why yeah. are we discussing choices? Um, mm-hmm. But probably I have a lot to thank my mom for to to yeah. show that it's it's possible and you don't Absolutely. have to miss out on anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is that is the there were two themes that led us to leaving Germany. I had no intention of ever leaving Germany. Yeah. And then I became a mom who is also an incredibly ambitious person and is dangerous when I'm bored. <laughs> when Pete Roberts said that to me, he's like, no, 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 no. You're dangerous when you're bored. It was like my whole soul lit up. I was like, yes, that's exactly what I am. <laughs> and it it just um, tried many, many different avenues. And it was that this cultural construct, this mental construct, construct, but then also how schools are set up, et cetera. Mm. It just got to the point with another theme in our life around, you know, services and mental health and things like that, where we made the incredibly painful, it was truly painful. Mm. It was so painful to leave Germany. Mm. Um, And yeah, and we moved there in 2016, which for a foreign family, super fun. That was real fun. Great timing. Talk about resiliency, <laughs> right? But yeah, that topic of like the expectation of what people are, po- you know, what what's a possibility for them mm. and to do it well, mm. right? To do yeah. it all with heart and with soul and well mm. um, is is something that now I look at other people doing things and I just think, okay, that isn't necessarily what I want to be doing with my time right now or with my skills, but I know I was undervalued. And so I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to say, if that is what your soul is calling you towards, your intuition, the facts, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then yeah, let's, let's figure out how to do this. Because yes. you can, because you can, you have that dream because you can. Mm, exactly. And then you'll figure it out. You know, there's a saying that someone gave me recently, which is no amount of failure will stop me from figuring this out. Mm. And when we, I mean, your story is just the embodiment of that. And when we live in that kind of mindset, it's true. Mm. But it's you're true. speaking me directly into my heart around mm. failure is... Oh my God, we need so much failure, more failure <laughs> culture and yes. attitude in the whole world. Um, not 
not being afraid of, of taking these steps. And I think, look at our kids. They're looking at us and they yeah. are right, looking at mom and dad and who else. Mm-hmm. And if we are just these perfect, trying to be these perfect, errorless persons, we're not doing them shit, right? It's, right, yeah. They need to learn that it's fine. And I think even Absolutely. in the process around, right, the difficult time with the coronavirus coming in and building the company, right? I've sat down, I've sat down at dinner tables and cried in the evening and mm-hmm. said, Jesus, I'm... Right? Am I strong enough yeah. to do this? Right, and my kids is just like, yeah. oh my God, thank you for, yeah. right. I can I can comfort you, and it's fine, and we will yeah. get through this. And I had yeah. these small personal coaches at home, right? Yeah, and and that is so important that life is not just this perfect place. It it has ups and downs, and it yeah. it is just so important that we that we don't cover it up. I, yes. Else we're racing horrible persons. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, watching my mom, because my mom was also a single mom, and mm. there was this one time where she got really ill. She got sent to the hospital, and she had built this incredible sales practice up, and the people stole it from her. And while she mm. was in the hospital, and you know, in the US, that we're talking like maybe two weeks, she was gone, and they divvied up. The practice that she had built that was very, I mean, in comparison to other places in our life, were was very profitable, right? And she shared that story with me openly about why she now had to make these hard decisions and why we were going to live in this place. And at the time, people were like, oh, you can't tell your daughter that. You can't, you know. And there were times when it probably would have been best that I didn't know all the details, let's be real. (laughs) But at the same time, that story does give me strength Mm -hmm. to follow and to take the risk and to know that I can figure it out. Mm -hmm. But building something up so that it can be stolen, I'm not going to continue to work there as an example, right? And so now is the grunt. So I do share things with my kids as well when things aren't going well or I, you know, I can't go to that thing because now I have a pitch opportunity and I'm going to be pitching or I'm going to choose to go to your thing and miss this pitch opportunity because you are so important to me, that kind of thing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, But as the grown up whose mom did share that kind of stuff with me, it does matter. Mm-hmm. It does it matter. It does matter. Mm-hmm. It does. Oh, yeah. generational yeah. love. I love oh, it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we still don't want to live with them, right? <laughs> uh, no. 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 I think it's, it's this concept of like it takes a village to raise the children is yeah. so true. And I just like to remind people that villages have multiple houses in them. I'm all in for that. <laughs> oh, oh, gratitude and boundaries. Yes, yes, boundaries. <laughs> important, important topic. Build your boundaries. That's right. <laughs> oh, well, Lona, I am so grateful for you sharing that story and the arc because you are still in the arc. Right? True. And so I just I really hope that there's a continued growth of your presence because what you're offering specifically in the Heidelberg area is so unique and having been in various places and various co-working spaces, creating that environment is, is truly a gift and it does change people's experiences, their mindsets. Thank you. Um, so I'm really, I'm going to say something very, very kooky. Ready? I'm very (laughs) proud of you. Oh, thank you. Oh, so thank that you. means so much coming from someone like you. <sighs> yes. Oh and thank you gosh. for kicking me in the butt a few times throughout my career. <laughs> when I got real negative, Lona was like, nah, moving uh, on. Butt kick. <laughs> Uh, okay, so how can people learn more about Tink Tink? How can they think learn about you? How can they follow you? Yeah. I'm like literally on all social media, right? I have had to learn that as well, <laughs> right? Um, so yes, I'm on LinkedIn. My company is on LinkedIn. Uh, my company is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, 
yeah, yeah. and obviously websites and everything. So yeah, mm. stop by. Everybody's welcome to stop by any time. Yeah. There is no need to book anything, right? The Germans are still mm. working on on right trying to figure out how that is not book something in advance and just stop by. But um, we will get the Germans there as well. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. And definitely follow. There's been some really cool activity around digital, the digital world, the digital economy yes. that was yes. very valuable. So even if you're not in Germany and you're not going to pop by this year, put it on your list of things to do, but also follow online and, and you're already going to get benefit. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> well, thank you so much. You're I'm welcome. Grateful. Thank you for, yeah, for just putting me on the spot here as you were. So... <laughs> Next week, Thursday, be there. Okay, Nicole, I am. <laughs> you kick my butt as well. Uh, I'm so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that, take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.